that would be great. Yeah, well, money must be possible. Great. Thank you. That's a This is the Lycra like, 83 from 1954, um, which is the cassette as well. Mm -hmm. We've got 107 Leica cameras right from the, the pre-production prototype cameras from 1913 all the way up to some of the digital cameras that were made in the mid 2000s so it tells the complete history of the Leica camera from, from a technical perspective, a design perspective and it's all arranged in chronological order so it really tells that story in a way that's very distinctive and, and absolutely unique. Well, the, ever since its introduction in 1925 with the, the first production camera, the, the Leica found favour with photojournalists. So all of those great names from photojournalism like Henri Cartier-Bresson, for example, Robert Kappa, Nick Oots from the, the Vietnam War, they all used Leica cameras. The, the camera was portable, it was compact, it could be carried easily, but also the quality was such that they, they knew they could go onto a battlefield or into a demonstration situation and come back with pictures that other cameras wouldn't let them get. Yeah, as a photo historian, for me, the, the first production model is always an important one, so that we, we have the very first version of that uh, camera from 1925 with a particular lens on it. The, the Leica M3 from 1954 is an absolute classic camera because it was a redesign of the, the Leica from a technical perspective, but that was a camera that then saw active service in, in Vietnam, the Korean Wars, and some of those other conflicts in Southeast Asia by you know, some of those incredibly well-known people like David Duncan Douglas, for example, who came back and brought some of these photographs back to the public through press. Not solid gold. Um, so the first one um, I'd love to show you is um, this 1904 um, Olympic gold medal. Uh, it's from the Summer Olympics in St. Louis in 1904 and it was awarded to Robert E. Hunter for the team golf. Uh, Robert Hunter was a 17-year-old amateur golfer and this medal is particularly rare um, because golf was actually only featured in the 1900 and 1904 Olympic Games and after a 112-year hiatus it actually returns to the Olympics this year in Rio so um, it's, a, it's a very fitting time to be offering it. Um, what adds to its uh, rarity is the fact that it's also solid gold so it's, it's a truly um, interesting piece of Olympic memorabilia. He, he gave a lot of evidence to the Titanic inquiry so we've actually got Titanic memorabilia and all of them were from survivors so um, and one of my favourite pieces from the collection is this set of keys from the Titanic. Um, they actually belong to Samuel Ernest Hemming, who was the lamp trimmer on board the Titanic. So he was obviously responsible for trimming all of the wicks on board. Um, but on the night of the disaster, he was responsible for fitting all the lifeboats with the lamps. So had an incredibly important role to play. Um, he was actually one of the last people on board the Titanic just as it sank into the water. But luckily he was rescued on a lifeboat, obviously carrying these keys. So they're an incredibly poignant thing to have in your hand.
down. Billy <laughs> seems to rush down thinking their son was having that. Relatively close to yeah. yeah, but 